ladies and gentlemen, and goblins, etc., 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 welcome once again to the Professional Goblins Podcast. Um, one of your hosts, Scott, with me as always is... Uh, Mike Myler, who is dealing with the Twitch, playing a very loud advertisement at him. <laughs> also with us. Yep, and I'm Svan Broadway, and this is my co-pilot, Pelly. And uh, today we have a very special guest. Who is? I'm Liz Liddell. So Liz, tell us, who are you? Why do people care? Trust uh, me, I, they will care. <laughs> uh, I am, uh, I'm an editor uh, in the RPG industry. I've been a freelance editor for about 10, well, over 10 years now, mm -hmm. uh, and have just started doing a, a little bit of writing as well. See, see, some people end up the other way around, and you're, and you're just like, not editing school, and I'm like, oh my god, I love you, thank you so much. You make, you make me, my tez into those. <laughs> Hopefully your autocorrect does that for you, but yes, I, I, my job is to make everyone I work with look really, really good. It's important. Trust us, we need it. Um, having, having now been on that side of it, I agree, I write some dumb stuff. Well, here's the funny thing is, when, when uh, I worked with my editor, because he started writing too somewhat recently, um, a year or two back, and he was just like, I'm like, Ian, come on, let's get Ian on the show at some point. You go, Ian, you're doing the same things you accuse me of. He's like, I can't edit my own stuff. And I'm like, it's I know. so true. It's so true. And I found like, I If you edit. want to be able to do it at all, you have to leave it for at least a week. And at even least, then. Yeah. Well, change no. the page background, change the font size, change the font type and and it, there, there are ways never thought upside thought down and backwards and standing on your head yeah yes yes yeah, but i was I, gonna say i, I uh, use a canadian guy because i could push him around and he'll take a ridiculous amount of shit so like, <laughs> that's what i was looking for for an editor i was like who will be a just obscenely patient with me canadian let's say that that's that's my ian with me um but yeah i found that i could edit i'm like wait i'm not as bad as i think i am because wow i'm not I'm not terrible at this because I'm the one writing, and people keep giving me junk because they're like, "You make so many errors I'm, in, in like spelling and stuff." I'm like, "Let's just do this by volume, though. Like, I put out this much material every week, and this much of it's wrong, and you guys put out this much, and you know, this much is wrong. Wow, that that's not bad, you know." Yeah, so, per capita. Per capita, I'm not I'm not bad, but just enough volume. <laughs> so, um. If you guys don't know, uh, we do a, for the first time viewers, oh my god, you're in for a treat. Um, we do a bit of a segmented show, we have a few sections, and we have a, uh, we're going to skip a review this week, um, just, we got a book, we'll, we're, we're, we're going to give them some feedback, it'll be good, um, but the, the second section, oh yes, Mike, in the future, editing, look at this, um, and the, uh, is a segment on your favorite character that you're currently playing, or a lesson you kind of learned as a GM. Um, so, does anyone want to go first for this? I will. I'm still between okay. characters, so you go on, Mike. Okay. So, I played in a 5e game that was run by, um, oh, what's his name? Eric Lang. He's the sword, sword, I think it's the sword quest RPG guy. He's a nice guy. He's up in the Northwest. He's part of that group. And, uh, there's a new group, and I wasn't really sure what to play, so I was like, okay, I'll play, like, a dwarf. And it was another one of those times where I didn't really know what I was playing yet. I just was like, ah, she's a lady and a dwarf and a barbarian, and she's got an axe, and let's go with it. There you go. And I found a sheep, oh, and no. so Befev became the champion of sheep. And she, like, <laughs> worshipped her sheep and <laughs> kept it for years. And it was, like, one of those sheep that, like, just never got shorn. Cause she oh, refused, like, oh, anybody who in any way injured her sheep, which is massive. Because it had, like, such a huge hair and coat. Uh, she would just destroy them and uh, it became one of my favorite characters and uh the group was a little bit weirded out by by my gonzo play style but uh ultimately warmed to befev and uh it was just like a, a good reminder that it's, it's if you're not really sure what to do and like you have trouble playing good characters which i do i have trouble playing good characters because i'm a good character in real life it sucks um <laughs> Championing something is a great thing oh, to totally. do, and if you've never done it, you should play a character who just, like, is the champion. They don't have to be a paladin. Like, I think she was just straight-up barbarian. They just have to champion something. Yeah. Like, that's Instant motivation. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Instant context for every situation. That's one of the reasons you said it doesn't have to be a paladin. That's one of the things I like about playing paladins is when you give a new character a paladin, you're like, your guy's really passionate about, what is your deity? Oh, and she oh, started a church, too. Yeah, that's right. She started a church to the sheep god. 
Uh -huh. and like, it's like tons of sheep puns and like, you know, you have to the fleece life and all this stuff. Like, <laughs> so I, mean, like I think really, really what we're saying is that when you're, when you're building a character and you're not sure what to do, just, just take whatever you've got and go all the way with it. Eleven, yep. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, Mike, so Mike, your characters have migrated from chickens to sheep? Mm. The Fev came long before Fringe. Oh, okay, okay. And Fringe so your, is way your beyond chickens. Your characters have obsessions with barnyard animals. Should we, ins uh, should we expect a cow knight coming soon? Oh. I did just release the rad cow. Or no, that's not yet. That's soon. <laughs> that thing I haven't released. <laughs> yeah. no, the PDF is done. I have to do the, the treatments and get the print proof. But yeah. So, um, oh, no. so who, who is up next? Uh, uh, I've got one. Or Liz, sure. do you want to go first? Oh, go ahead. Uh, so while I was at Gen Con, uh, one of the, let's see, I will actually to confirm, have I talked about Benjamin Woolworth yet? I don't think so. Wait, was uh, the it? Woolworth estate? Not, not the state. No, of the estate. Uh, Are you talking oh, about the, um, uh, the one the where Woolworth's you had Woolworth's mansion and, 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 you know, they had a huge enterprise at the department stores? Mmm... Not in this case. Uh, he was my Call of Cthulhu character at Gen Con, and I can't remember if I brought him up yet. I don't think so. We haven't okay, had that many episodes so... since Gen Con. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, so, uh, Benjamin Woolworth was my pre-Gen Call of Cthulhu character, and he was supposed to be this, you know, daredevil who was fabulously rich and very handsome and was never happy if he wasn't in danger. And uh, to put this in context... Uh, of course, in Call of Cthulhu, your attributes are out of 100. Mm -hmm. And we were playing Pulp Cthulhu, so, you know, your stats were a little bit more oomphy. And Benjamin Woolworth had a 90 charisma oh, and a 30 intelligence. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, and he also had an 80% credit rating. So that that's basically what I went off of. Uh, but this was a great example of... Um, I was meaning to play him as the Daredevil, but the roles just went elsewhere. Um, Benjamin just kept critically or extremely succeeding sanity checks after seeing really, like, messed up shit. And so we decided, like, he's a sociopath. Like, that's why he's not <laughs> phased by any of this. Like, that's why he keeps, like, botching his, um, his sense motive equivalents. Like, he just doesn't care about other people. Uh, and then it turns out through the GM, like, altering the plot slightly and all this, that the doctor who was in the party was Benjamin's doctor when he was a child, and he found out that he was sociopathic and hypnotized him to turn his murderous tendencies towards the good of the government. Ah, so that's kind of dexterous here, prestige. I love it. Yeah, and so it turns out that since this had been done, since he was so young that he didn't have any personality of his own. Like, he was just this person that the Doctor had created. Uh, and so that meant that he was a perfect uh, candidate to be a mask of Narlothotep. So it turns out that he was, like, the the Red Viper, like, cult leader dude. He was the next incarnation <laughs> of the cult leader. And I got to, at the whole, like, apex of the, of the game, I got to turn into a snake with wings and fight the party. That's I was awesome. the most gorgeous snake, by the way. Um, he, we were at Masquerade Ball when it happened, and when he transformed <laughs> into a snake man, he still had his Oberon costume on. <laughs> so he was Fairy King, Winged Snake. Even better. Um, and so I, I ended up fighting the party and then flying away into the night. And uh, <laughs> We got to write each other's epilogues, and so the actual, like federal agent who was on the team I got to write his epilogue and it's like okay so you drop out of the bureau you're really jaded now and you're like single mindedly hunting you know this monster who you thought was your friend and blah 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 and late at night whenever you're on your fifth drink of scotch you think you hear this <laughs> because as the game went on Wolver's laugh got more and more awful and, and by the end, he was just, like, this weird, laughing gremlin snake monster in a fairy costume. That's awesome. Call of Cthulhu, everybody. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yep. Yeah. Liz, Scott, anybody? Well, Liz, I'm, uh, I'm actually in an interesting place. I'm kind of in between a bunch of games right now. 
Uh, but the the one that I'm I'm most excited about right now is we're starting up a Starfinder game because of course, uh, of course. all these friends who've been hearing about Starfinder for months and they're like we can play it now, Woo! so they're uh, they're banging down my door to to get me to run a game. So my spouse and I are co GMing this game. So I'll be playing the majority of the time, but I'll be filling in uh, as GM from time to time. So we're trying to figure out how do I play a character who can just sort of disappear for a while and it's not weird. Uh, and so uh, in in Starfinder the the game design is sort of set up that you have your own starship uh, as, as the party. And so uh, we've actually come up with the idea that I will play the ship. I love uh, it. So sort of imagine if, uh, you know, think about Star Trek Next Generation Enterprise, so you've got that really distinctive computer voice. Uh, if, if that's an actual entity who can sometimes sort of possess an android body when necessary to, like, go wander around, uh, that's, oh, that's the concept like that, that I'm looking at. That's really awesome. Yeah. That's very cool. Uh... What's her name in the... Andromeda was like that. The ship had an avatar it could, it could manifest and stuff. It was really cool. Yeah, just, yeah, and so it just, like, I up and it. wander around when need be. Will you Actually, be taking it... the pilot role, or...? Um, so we, we haven't sat down with the rest of the players yet, um, because of the way roles work. Um, I could see it working as a pilot really naturally, but I could also really easily do engineer. I could really easily do yeah. science officer, just whatever people need. That's cool. cool. Yeah, gives a lot of flexibility, which is nice when you have a you know a newer group of players. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you going to collect your your special rules for it at all, or is or is there enough in Starfinder that you can just like go right from the bang? Um, I think there's probably there's enough there that we can lay the foundation. We might have to to do a couple of tweaks to uh, whatever creature type I end up playing to explain why I'm not actually an autonomous entity. Let's say I, that was something that my first read through. I'm like, I know what I'm writing. <laughs> there, there's a it's few things like I have a... in that book. I, I'm commissioned to write three Starfinder books at the moment, so I'm. I got a few things I want, and, and that was one of them. I don't think I'll be writing that one. Got lots of weapons, though. So yeah. If you want a inspiration, uh, I recommend the webcomic uh, Zap. Um, Zap. It involves the, the ship called Excelsior. Um, actually, no, my poster's not anywhere close, uh, but the ship, like, um, presents this whole graphic avatar who is Excelsior, um, and she picks her own captain, Love and it. that sort of thing. <laughs> I choose you! Yeah, pretty much. You get to pilot me! <laughs> Ooh, baby! Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come along for a ride. With the cargo bays around back. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> See, it's a it's a gold mine. You have so many innuendos and puns you can throw out. It will be I'm, great. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cut myself off right here. I will go dark. <laughs> not so lesson great. learned: playing the ship leads to puns. Oh, always. Almost Everything leads to puns eventually. Well. So, um, my fifth game didn't meet last week. Uh, it'll be hopefully meeting this Saturday, so I will have some stories for you guys next week of, uh, what was it, Caspar the Crimson. Um, but let's see, previous game things. You made me think of something that isn't super gameish, but it's interesting. We had a, um, with a sociopath, someone was running a site, and it was kind of a modern horror vampire-y thing, oh, supernatural, but ten years Is before supernatural. World of Darkness it? again? Is this, where you, really? No, no, I, it wasn't okay. that. It was, it was, a, it was right. a forum board with some rules and stuff. The fortune of RPGs. Yeah, pretty much. Right. Um, but it was a message board thing, and um, the site's been writing for a while. I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, you guys kind of need an antagonist, right? And they're like, yeah, sure. So I just got out of an aberrant psychology class. So I wrote up literally a textbook, like down to the McDonald triad, like you, like urinates in his own bed because he, because <laughs> of like it's part of the triad, like sociopathic serial killer like I, you could cop, you could compare it to like Wikipedia or like research papers, and that is who I was playing. The platonic serial killer. He oh. was just yeah he he was the, he was not the he was the intelligent serial killer archetype, like from psychology, like I I could literally pull out the sources for it, and um, the stuff I did was just screwed up. Like I think I had him like pin little skunks to trees and stuff. He liked to torture animals and weird stuff, and um. We realized too late that the person who was running the site and kind of GMing every thread was a Mary Sue. She was the best vampire who had the best powers 
and was the ultimate vampire because of all the powers, but she was still vulnerable and had more powers, and she could be a this and a that, and she I was mean, special. I have all the powers. Exactly, and it was just like, it was like textbook, and I'm sitting there like, I wrote a really interesting character. Here's how you do it. And everyone's like, oh my god, that's so creepy and wonderful. I love how you're doing this. And you're doing it all with like power level like one on the site, which was like the equivalent to like Robin when he first gets the costume. You know what I mean? Like he's he's street thug, and like every, and like the the guys in the site can't touch him because he's just doing creepy things and like setting him up, and it was great. Um, and this chick just has this like. And then I do this, and I solve the problem, and it's done in, like, a post. And everyone on the site's like, that's not okay. Excuse? And, like, and she's like, okay, fine, I guess I'll edit it. And I got kicked off that site, because she didn't like me. Oh. I played complete within the rules. I did everything, and everyone else liked me. She just didn't, and I left, and I'm like, I got kicked off the site for being a good psych psychopath. Yay. <laughs> feels oh, gold feels star. all cold and shivery and deathy inside. So, um, but yeah, it, it's sometimes you don't even need to have those big stats uh, and sometimes a GM, a bad GM can ruin a game. So. Here, here. Yep. So true. So, um, Mike, uh, I think the next one here is, uh, working on your, your favorite project that you are working on. Oh, yes. yes. Mike, editing. We do that. Yes, so Mike editing. knows where, uh, <laughs> where to cut the time code. Yeah, it so, saves uh, me a little, like, 20 minutes later. But, um, yeah, so, uh, I'm working on Ballion Tour, which I mentioned earlier. Which was like a <clears throat> like a stretch goal for the 2099 Wasteland Kickstarter. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, check out my website mikemile.com. It has lots of information on this and free PDFs. But 2099 Wasteland is a 5e campaign setting generator, sort of in the vein of Fallout, but if there were magic. Mm. Um, and it's it's in the Hypercore universe. And uh, yeah, I promised it a long time ago, and I'm finally getting around to doing it, and it's awesome. The cover art I am really, really love. I just put like the map because it's it's about like here's the first randomly generated map and then you you know generate more. That's how the thing works. And um, like here's how you play through it as like a long form example of play. And uh, which is because that's what they all wanted. So I was like, okay, cool, we'll, we'll, let's do that. And uh, yeah, so it's just like the map and then Willem Shakespeare, who is uh, this insane tribal leader of this this like savages that worship William Shakespeare and his plays like. Harmlet and March Beth. So you have to like go and watch them reenact Those classics. them. classics. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hello. Stuff like that. And uh, yeah, yeah, see, that's one of the things you have to do to oh, acquire hello. them as part of your town. Yeah. It's <laughs> fucking yeah. beautiful. I had a lot of fun with it. I did. I did. And then there are rad cows. And like the, the artist who did it, like he, did, he only does line work now, though he finally got a tablet. So I'm going to try to work him into color. But I'm um, like I'm starting him out. Like I I like to pick out like people who are good. And he's like a friend of mine. I used to play D and D with, so it's like it's double cool. And he just like nailed the shit out of the rad cows. They look so freaking weird and like. <laughs> and then uh, we're coming back I, to livestock so I... again, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> man. Is this a fascination for you? I mean, I grew up near the rural belt. I don't know what to tell you. Um, you like sheep. But uh, I use the actual eyes for cows, and they look more. They make the cow, the rad cow, look more alien than it did before. I like, I added actual cow eyes to the color scheme. <laughs> I insist on a duck-based uh, archetype, Mike. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe some kind of farm yard. It could make sense because, like, natural resources are super important in Twenty Nine Nine Wasteland. So we can That's make a true. druid archetype that, like, is about Does, barn like animals. barnyard fowl. Yeah. Or, uh, oh, man. Foul, yeah. oh man, I, I really want a uh like a cavalier order. The order of the goose. Here, come here, come here, come here. Just just be an asshole always. <laughs> like chase people around, steal their bread, bite them. No, <laughs> these are resilient as far as large fowl go. Oh yeah. And they're jerks. They yeah. are such jerks. My uh Christos, one of my writers, in the has a uh has a bunch of geese on his property, and he has to run to his car every day because of it. <laughs> he was like I the, geese are the only uh, the only bird I have ever been bitten by. <laughs> but say Savannah, I don't think I don't think that's true of you. Yeah. That is not true of me. I have not been bitten by a goose, but it was not because of my own power. I, I was apparently feeding them bread as a small child, and they decided that they want to jump me and take the bread. <laughs> and I got rescued, and it was, but 
I mostly get bitten by cockatiels, but you know, not much. And now you're like, I am master of you birds. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, I welcome our bird overlords. Yeah. It's gonna be machine overlords, I'm telling you. Hashtag machine war is coming. Machine bird overlords? Oh, I can't wait bird to get machines? raptor legs. Ooh, it's that sounds so good. Cool. Uh, Mike, can I can I give a preview of the Heresy Knight for my my part? The Heresy Knight? Oh yeah, from Book of Week, of course. Go ahead. Yes. yes. I'd love okay, to hear uh, what you're doing with it because I haven't seen it. <laughs> all right. Uh, so what? Um, of course, all of the Paladin oaths in Five V have tenants, which I really like as a, a fluff thing. Um, and so what I want to do for the Heresy Knight is I want to make them practical. Like, this Ascus well, quick, is a quick world... Quick sidebar. Quick sidebar. This is for the Book of Exalted Darkness for 5e, which is like the Book of Vile Darkness, but with a holy deco-punk aesthetic. Okay, True. Sorry. Um, but yes, Ascus, the world that it's, like, based in, is literally, like, partially ascended to heaven. So, like, it's totally out the wazoo. Um, and so you just can't have blatant, stupid bad guys and get anywhere. Uh, so the tenets of heresy are perversion, there's no virtue that cannot be turned in upon itself and corrupted, enact this wherever possible in word and deed, uh, destruction, it is not enough to assault the minds and morals of those who follow the light, their monuments must topple and their champions ground underfoot, work through proxies if you must, but evil is best served by those who use their own hands, uh, practicality, Never let your own code stand in the way of striking a blow against heaven. Likewise, do not indulge in meaningless destruction when a proper target is present. Sorry. And putrefaction, which was my favorite. Uh, remember that you are an agent of darkness in a world of light. Your very presence corrupts the world and sets it rotting. Therefore, do not carelessly throw away your life or that of those you have corrupted. Ah, oh, that is excellent, Savannah. Thank Wholesale you. approval. Thank you. So, yeah, that, that was the thing. Practical evil. Like, you can't have, like, the Joker dashing in crazily because that's just not how it works. And by the way, the Joker is totally a player option, and you can find the build on my website. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, um, there we go. Yeah. Also, uh, he would technically fit under the uh, the Heresy Knight purview because there's a significant minority that just want to see the world burn. Ah, uh, well, he's got the mad scientist class. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But he, he could definitely, like, give a nod to yeah, yeah. Well, do you have any of the mechanics for the heresy night worked out yet, or no? I'm working on the um, the oath spells and all that because they definitely like. There's a spot on the document that says if they even get oath spells, it's like hell's yes, I'm giving my babies oath spells. Jeez, Mike. Well, I mean, that's one of the ones I like to cheap out on. So, like, samurai paladins of Mr. Fukuma get their magic ancestral swords, right? And then Ooh. in Wasteland, um. The uh, nuclear knights, they get their, their power armor instead of oath spells. Mm -hmm. so, like, That's fair. Yeah. yeah, I might do something interesting instead of that. I feel like a lot of the homebrew ones get both and it feels really broken. Yeah, it's one or the other. Don't, don't, yeah. double, don't double up. Yeah. One of my favorite things, no, that's when we, uh, we were doing, we have a book of anti paladin archetypes or uh, Pathfinder, uh, we just removed Plague Carrier on like every, or was it the Plague Blooded or the one that lets you be infected and not, and be infected but not affected and be able to spread it, like Plague Bringer or something. It's so, the... Typhoid Mary archetype? Well, that that's already in Pathfinder for Anti-Paladins. Um... Um, but we replace it with a bunch of stuff, and the spells, too. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Well, this is for 5e, but... Also, yeah, uh, Axorman in the chat says that he also likes sentence about being evil smart, and that a heretic is not one that is obvious, unlike what 40k wants you to believe. But Ooh. I will point out to you, sir, that there are, uh, like sneaky evil dudes in 40k like uh what the hell is the name of it there's the academy that ravenor is fighting against i'm the only 40k junkie here aren't i no i am i, yeah. I just don't know what you're talking yeah. about it, moloch was was uh trained at it it's like the basically the anti-inquisitor academy and they don't teach like chaos powers they i know teach you the how to radical be, like... inquisitor thing N uh no that was that was a novel and it was a cool novel but that's okay, about a dude in the library novels, so i might not be one i read Oh, it's specifically from the Ravenor shit. Ah, oh, ah, uh, I'll look it up later. I'll look it up later. But anyway. Yeah. No, it sounds because good. I, I can't wait to see it. I'm thinking if minus oath spells, given their thing, uh, since they're inherent heresies uh, in 
uh, Book of Exalted Darkness, that that could definitely be a, like, you can totally awaken a heresy in somebody, and now they're, you know, attached to wrath or whatever. Oh, check the spell list, because you're supposed to design that spell. Yeah, I saw that. That's that's why I was <laughs> thinking. I'm like, do it, because I, that's, that's part of why I want to give them oath spells, but I'm sure we can make it, like, a spell-like ability. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. What is somebody yeah. saying uh, in the chat there, Mike? If I could play a game in this setting, I'd do so. I'd so do the Heresy Paladin, so I had rules for myself on how to play, and so my personal moral compass isn't that bothered. I can be a minor scale nice, but still go for the large scale evil. Well, you're kind of like the inherent heresies that all the characters get kind of, kind of do influence your play. Like there's there's this is one of the reasons it's not Pathfinder, because uh, one of them is lust. So when you get the opportunity to be lustful, you have to make a save or you go for it. It doesn't really matter what the opportunity is, right? And it's like that for wrath and pride and, and so on and so forth. But yeah, having having more for the paladin is is definitely cool. And everything you said, like the putrefaction thing, was dope. All the oh, yeah. the flavor you intertwined in it was just top notch. Mm. That's why I'm going uh, to pay Liz... you money for it. Yay, money! Uh, Liz, do you have anything uh, going on right now? You know, yes. And I'm in an actually fascinatingly odd spot where I can't talk about any of it. Uh, just that because it's just me and I'm drowning in work, and it's either all things that haven't been announced yet, or they've been announced, but like they haven't been announced with author names, and so they're not out yet. So I can't really like actually say I've been working on them. But uh, it's uh, so so that's been interesting. But it's it's been a lot of fun. I've been I've been doing a lot of stuff for Starfinder, um, both with Paizo and with other companies, just because I've had the privilege of being able to work on it for the last year. I know it really well. Cool. It's fun. Jelly. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> I, I got. I just. I just got finished reading it. So here we released the product right after we finished reading it. So oh, right. Well, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I got to translate the hyperscore system to it, and I guess it's going to be more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Because I was. I don't know. I listened to what is it? St uh, no. No direction beyond is what they're yeah. calling it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they were like transporting Pathfinder to Starfinder, like Pathfinder features are deadlier it's like shit he's like all about hyper scores <laughs> making you deadlier so like yeah kind of uh, i don't know um hey that actually is a great segue to the product i'm working on my chair is also apparently listing to the right today i have no idea why but i may have to repair it later. <laughs> um so we're actually converting a bunch of uh little red stuff that people wanted converted over to starfinder we are not converting over necropunk yet um, it's really interesting seeing all the convergent design. We did um, Necropunk, which is biotech, um, sci-fi. We did it about three or four years beforehand. And I'm like, that's literally the same way we did it. Oh, my God. In a good way, in a good way. Not in a, how dare you rip us off. But it's like, travel. It's like, they're like, oh, you have to, you just like, are you in system? It takes about this many days. You add, Is it out of system? It takes about this. I'm like, we did the thing, yay. Um, <laughs> and then I see like weapons and I'm like, we did that one, yes. Um, so it's really cool to see it. And a lot of their um, the skill changes, we did the same things with it. Um, vehicles, we did entirely differently. Um, I'm still not in love with the vehicle system, to be honest. Um, there's too much of a right hand, left hand, not talking thing going on. Um, I, I have thoughts about that as well. I, I, think, uh, I think you're not gonna be alone. Like, there, we'll talk about more, but there's a thing with, like, size categories having very little effect in characters, but being a huge thing in ships, and I'm like, there's some, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so we're converting over, we're doing two books, we're doing a book of racial conversions of our greatest hits, so to speak, and a class one that of things that will fit, a lot of gonzo stuff in there. Um, oh, you said, okay, you said racial, racial, racial stuff. Racial. My brain heard it as Rachel stuff, and I'm like, <laughs> is that a genre? I don't know. No, and we're, do, we're doing a lot of races. Okay, so you're you're doing the best of. Yeah. Um, and the cool thing Star is- Starfinder cookbooks, come on. There you go, I like it, Victoria. <laughs> I like it. Um, but yeah, we're doing a big thing on that. It's kind of fun to take some stuff we were, I worked on like six, seven years ago and be like, now I need to think of this as a sci-fi thing? All right, then, let's give it a shot. So I get to like do- Stuff I wrote, I'm like, oh god, why did I write this? This is terrible. And I get to rewrite it. <laughs> um, That's gotta be cathartic. But it gives you another chance at it. You can kind of, like, clean it up and, and bring it up to speed. A lot of it doesn't need much editing. A lot, or, Sorry, everything needs editing. doesn't need as much... Um, <laughs> much! No, much it doesn't, doesn't need there. as much, like, conversion stuff. It's like, change the term continent to planet is a lot of it. Um, 
and like change like dock to space dock. But there are certain ones I just entirely rewrote, like, nope, nope, this doesn't work, but it's interesting, we're just going to go for it. Um, for those asking, we are not doing Stray Spell, and we are not doing... We're definitely not doing Stray Spells, because that's a whole book to itself, so we're not converting that over. Um, we're not converting over the, the Kaiju or Giant Robot Rules from Gonzo. Um, that's, that's its own project. Um, but we are Sounds doing... Sounds like a great project. It's fun. Uh, yeah, well, Gonzo 2 has most of our crazy fun stuff. Um, but we are definitely going to convert over a few things. It's funny, we wrote this thing called Dahundu in one of our recent uh, racial books. The, the one we put out for Starfinder. And we're converting ba over this one called Bahundu. They oh, are, okay, that's a much better name. Bahundu. They only have three language words in their language. Bahundu. Um, <laughs> but it turns out they're really similar to an idea we wrote a few years back called the Wug that everyone loves. So they, they kind of, I'm like, all right, I guess we're writing something similar again. It's not a bad concept. And, they're, and they're, they're separate enough, but it's just one of those things. But yeah, that's what you guys can look forward to in the next few weeks. We got an alt path prestige coming out at some point. Nogwall's still almost done. Oh my god. We've been working on that. The logos coming together. Um, that's what I've been working on. If they only have three words in their language, they must say so much with intonation. They do. Um, Bahundu are also very simplistic creatures. Um, and they learned other languages later, but they were just, like, super chill. And they, they settled, people settled on their planet and didn't realize they were intelligent for a few years until Bahundu walked into their town, like, well, this is nice. And they're like, who are you? Oh, we've lived here for a few years. And they're like, really? Yeah, we, we've just been over the hill, not, not really, just minding our own business. They're just, like, the super chill dudes. They're kind of like stoners a little bit. Um... I think you talked about them in, in I did at one point, yeah. Episodes, yeah. But anyway, so That's um nice. favorite project for the next thing is um favorite well, I was project... gonna mention that uh oh, sorry, go ahead. Max is here, uh Savannah. Oh Max watching. Max from uh Hypercore. Oh uh, gotcha. Max. Sniper rifle Max. I need to have uh, my sniper rifle Max. Yes, yes. And he has once again lodged a complaint about my antagonistic game mastering style. Which I maintain is not antagonistic. It is realistic, but whatever. So is there like a GM's board that you can lodge those complaints with? Yes. I mean, uh, I don't know. It, it is on this show. We always joke in my group that there should Please be a ignore. Yelp. <laughs> a Yelp for reviewing game ads. What a great idea. Yelp, Yelp. Maybe like Max rate, my, his... rate my professor .com, but rate my GM .com. Oh my god. Yelp. Yelp. Oh my god, Max, there you go. Side project, rate my GM .com. Yelp, it. make it happen, dude. Mike, so we're doing that before or after we do the GMUD. The graphic mud that we were another... talking about way back when. Yeah. No, I, I, I emailed him about it. I haven't heard back about that one. Ah, he's and I, I, I researched it a little bit, and somebody tried it, I think, about two years ago. Okay, and well. uh, it didn't hold up. But, I mean, they don't have a user base. Like, he's already sitting on, I think, 26,000 or 30,000 people or something. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah. Um, yeah. are we moving on to the uh, next segment? Uh, do we want to rip on Max a little bit more? Oh no, I want to mention that Max uh, got his introduction to game mastering from me, and that I do it like I'm the PS3 and you're playing Grand Theft Auto. And <laughs> most game masters do not do that. Um, uh, do we want to but... mention the time that uh, my character went into the hypernet and like made him a fake Canadian citizen so he could acquire the sniper rifle legally Sir and like Barrington, named him? I believe, was yeah, his like name. Barry Barrington or yes, something. Yes, Barry Barrington. Yes. Yes. Uh, and he was a lawyer, so it was a double, double good. <laughs> All right. Yes. So moving on. Thank you for coming up, Max. That's cool. And I hope that college is going well. Bye, Max. Um, Must mean he's on a uh, chat, right? Yeah, he's in the chat. He's in the chat room. And apparently he's watching all our episodes, so it's like, way to go, cool. dude. Like, awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, One of our, like, four viewers. No, so I hear, we're all, like, waving here. Are, are, is this video feed live as well? Yeah. It is. Yes. Oh, so people are watching me right now. Excellent. Yeah. Well, yes. actually, I, they're watching the small yeah. thumbnail of you most of the time, unless you're talking. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm your cameraman, too, guys. <laughs> it's true, yeah. Scott hosts. It's, it all runs through Twitch. Uh, but don't worry, we, it's, you, do, our dozen of people will see you. It's going to be dope. It's dope. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so for a new project, uh, this is where we, we prop up stuff that we can't profit from. Um, I'm going to talk about the Starfarers Companion. Uh, Ooh, because if you're getting Starfinder, that's a good one, because Owen was a lead designer. You would know, I always get it wrong. 
That's right. Yeah. Yeah, he's lead design? Okay, yeah. So he, like, picked out some stuff from Pathfinder that he knew people would want converted, and uh, they released pretty much the same day. So if you want to play, I think, a Paladin or a Magus, uh, they covered most everything. Um, or, like, a Vishyanka. Yeah? 